Welcome to the Bothell City Council meeting of May 7th, 2019. Please uh, rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> we have some absences tonight. We've got uh, Sierra Councilmember Agnew, Councilmember McAuliffe, and Deputy Mayor are uh, absent and excused. Uh, the rest of the council members are here. Tonight's going to be a bit of a truncated agenda because I have to leave at seven, and there's only four of us, so you'll be down to three, and that is no longer a council meeting. So we will be uh, we will be ending at seven. I, I have to go to work, so. Um, with that meeting agenda approval, so I'd like to pull item number three, which is review public engagement, engagement opportunities, five special presentations, six staff briefings, seven manager, uh, city manager council committee reports. And uh, council conversations and the executive session. And 11B, which is the new business item about motorized uh, foot scooter pilot project. Is everybody okay with that? Good, okay. Um, moving on to the proclamations, we'll come down to the podium. Okay, we've got two. One of them is um, of the affordable housing proclamation and I have two gentlemen here, Mike Stanger, is that correct? Mike Stanger, okay, and Rob Bean. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'll do the reading here. Uh, affordable Housing Week, whereas all people should have access to safe, healthy, and, and affordable homes within the communities of opportunity, and whereas studies have found that each $100 increase in median rent results in a 15% increase in homelessness in metro areas and 39% increase in homelessness in nearby suburban and rural areas, whereas some families are considered housing insecure because they are spending more than half of their income on rent and utilities, and whereas the, com uh, the combined cost burden of housing plus transportation can be substantially reduced by locating uh, affordable housing opportunities in proximity to transit, and whereas the all home community identifies affordable housing as a critical component of making homelessness rare, brief, and one time, and whereas the Association of Washington Cities determined that enhancing efforts to increase affordable housing, decreasing homelessness, and improving uh, a strained behavior health system was a critical priority for the 2019 legislative session. And whereas United in an effort to raise public awareness, communities throughout the King County are, are uh, participating in local affordable housing week efforts to inform the public and the critical need to preserve and increase affordable housing in our communities. And whereas the city of Bothell endorses the goals, objectives and purposes of affordable housing week and in doing so, uh, recommits itself to ensuring that the community thrives with opportunity of, for all people that live with dignity and safe, healthy, and affordable homes. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the city of Bothell does hereby pro uh, proclaim the week of May 13th through the 17th, 2019 as Affordable Housing Week. And I got one for each of you. <laughs> oh, wait. Nope, those are yours. Okay. okay. There you go. All right. Thank you. Yeah, Brett, gotta be quick tonight. I know this one. Mayor Council, my name is Rob Beam. I'm the board member of the North Urban Human Service Alliance, uh, one of the sponsors with the Housing Development Consortium of Affordable Housing Week. Uh, was here last year uh, at this same time, and I just want to note uh, what a huge year it's been for uh, the City Council of and the City of Bothell in implementing their housing strategy with some pretty uh, hopeful and aggressive strategies that uh, you're looking to implement. Uh, two to be pay particular attention to, uh, transit-oriented development opportunities, and I know you're gonna be considering multifamily tax exemption. And as advocates for long-term affordability, we encourage you to consider uh, adopting the MFTE with permanent affordability in mind. And wanted to invite you and others who may be uh, hearing this to an event uh, next Thursday or, uh, at uh, Ballinger Commons in Shoreline, uh, where the King County Housing Authority, which recently purchased this 400 unit uh, 1970s version uh, apartment complex, uh, has been able to preserve permanent affordability uh, at that project. So a good example of taking market housing 
using the public authority and making it affordable housing for generations to come. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, next proclamation is the Puget Sound Starts uh, Here Month. Whereas, hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whereas Puget Sound and the waterways that connect our mountains to the sh share contribute numerous ways to Bothell's economic infrastructure, quality of life, and our natural resources. <clears throat> whereas the City Council's environmental goal is to protect the natural environment through the integrated natural resources management. And whereas water quality is a priority for the health and welfare of Bothell citizens. And whereas millions of pounds of toxic pollutants enter Puget Sound every year, most which result in, from rain washing over hard surfaces contaminated with yard chemicals, pet waste, oils, soaps, uh, I thought I said soups, uh, and other toxins that enter the storm drains, streams, and ultimately the Puget Sound. And whereas the state agencies and more than 750 local organizations, governments, tribes, including Bothell, have joined together to engage residents in protecting and improving local and regional water quality, and whereas the Puget Sound Starts Here Month is an opportunity to provide educational opportunities to the public to learn how they can help clean the Puget Sound and our local waterways. Now, therefore, I, Andrew Rayum, the mayor of the city of Bothell, do hereby proclaim the month of May 2019 as Puget Sound Starts Here Month in the city of Bothell, Washington, and call upon all citizens to protect natural resources by reducing and eliminating sources of pollution. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Christy Cox. I work in surface water here at the city. I'll keep this short, and I would have condensed this if I knew you were in a time crunch. Um, I would just encourage everyone this month and all year long to visit PugetSoundStartsHere.org to find simple ways that you can help improve water quality in Puget Sound and right here in Bothell. Thank you. Okay, now we have the visitor comment period. Is there anybody that wants to provide public comment? Going once, going twice. Okay, moving right along to the consent agenda. Nothing's been pulled from consent. Is there a motion? Moved, Moved by Councilmember McNeil, second by Councilmember Liam. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, go ahead and place your vote. We all better vote or else it's not gonna work. <laughs> There we go. Passes uh, unanimously. The Deputy Mayor Rose, uh, Councilmember McAuliffe and Councilmember Agnew absent and excused. We're on to new business, AB 19-080. <clears throat> Authorize the city manager to begin design for the Bothell Northeast widening, Redder Way to 240th Street Northeast, CFP project number T74. We have Mr. Morikawa. Welcome. Thank you. Um, with the tone you're setting, I almost feel like just asking if you have questions, but I'll try to go really quickly through this thing. So. Um, the city has an opportunity to advance a project earlier. We received grant funding in um, last year in 2018. We went through the grant application process and typically we get money as early as 2021 or 2022. This one happened to be 2022. Uh, the Puget Sound region is kind of in a crunch right now. They're having some projects that can't move forward as quickly as they wanted to and they need to spend the money. So one option they had was a call, sending out a call to figure out if there were any projects in future years that could start earlier. And this is one project that could do that because we're actually just starting design. Um, sometimes it's difficult when you start trying to get to construction, but obviously this is the kickoff point. So this project actually um, meets that requirement. Um, I just wanted to go a little bit about why it would be, in our staff opinion, wise to start earlier rather than waiting to 2022. Uh, this project is the one that essentially widens Bothell Way, which turns into Bothell Everett Highway and across the Snohomish County line. It would start at Reeder Avenue, which is basically where McMinniman's main entrance is and the multi-way boulevard kind of necks down to two lanes. It would go north all the way past 191st, past Safeway to 240th. So that's the last section between I-405 and downtown Bothell that's not 405 lanes. So we would do that, extend it to 405 lanes. That's basically also in our Imagine Bothell Comprehensive Plan is one of the projects that is required to um, be completed by the target year in order for us to continue to meet our uh, traffic level of service requirements as we grow according to our plan. Um, so it's basically very, it fits very nicely into the transportation impact fee program. Um, the other things that this thing does is essentially addresses sidewalks for pedestrians and bike facilities. Um, there's no sidewalks along most of that 
corridor, there's a few sidewalks along the new developments. There are no bike uh, lanes right now. And this project would basically install all of that. And we've been getting calls about bikes and pedestrians for that corridor. So the other thing it would do is we've been working with community transit and they just recently opened the Swift line all the way down to Canyon Park from the north, the parking ride. They have basically told us they're interested in extending it down to the campus through downtown. And that would be great. Um, but what needs to happen there is to get rid of that choke point. So this is the project that would essentially open it up for transit as well. So this project actually competes really well because it addresses vehicle capacity, pedestrians, transit, and bike. But the project is fairly large. It's to get the whole thing done is probably gonna be about $57 million. So we have to go through multiple grant cycles. So the earlier we can get started, the earlier we can get the project done. This is kind of a conceptual cross-section. Please don't hold us to it. It's most, mostly to give you an ideal of the scope of the project versus what you see out there today, which is two or three lanes with nothing else on the outside. The bike lanes, we're committed to doing some sort of protective bike lanes, but we don't know if it's gonna be separated from the road separated in one direction in each side of the road. So those are the deep design details we would go through. The north end, like you know, we've um, finished a few years ago. We widened it up to five lanes between 240 and 228. We finished a multi-way boulevard a couple years ago, and the in-between is essentially what we're trying to do. So the opportunity basically would require us to commit to doing the project early. So if we said, yes, and they would want our answer, I think before the end of July, uh, we would be committed to starting later this year or early next year. Uh, we can't go back and say, oh, we changed our mind, we wanna go back to 2022. Um, the other thing I wanted to let you know was, there's a process we would need to go through before we actually start spending money. So if you were to say, yes, please advance this project, the rest of the year would, most likely be taken up mostly with finishing the paperwork to work to obligate the money with washed out and federal highways. We actually have to advertise to get a consultant. We typically shortlist, um, then we typically interview, then we have to negotiate a fee and a scope of work, then we have to come back to you to approve that, and then we can start the work. So likely to work when it really gets started in earnest until about November or December. So by the time all that takes place, we'd be probably lucky to spend about $100,000, $150,000. Of that, over 80% would be grant funded. So we're really looking out of pocket for about twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 on that order of magnitude. <coughs> Excuse me. So the plan would be hopefully to start early. This project fits well into the transportation impact fee program. Staff would come back before the end of the year to update that list, including putting this project in, and that would allow us to move forward with the bulk of the spending. And if you have any questions, I would certainly entertain them. Any questions from Council, Councilor Olson? Is there any opportunity to partner with Community Transit to do some of the station design or do some of that construction in conjunction with the project? Uh, I think that's what we're hoping to do. Um, I think once we get into the design part process, we will have level of effort available for us to start talking about those things. And that would open opportunity for future grant opportunities in which they share and partner with us. So we are certainly looking in that direction. And would this kind of push another project that we're slating for this time frame out from the, the TIP? It probably would not. Um, we have been juggling as it is. We're also fairly, we're trying to also wrap our hands around the Sound Transit 3 work as well. So we're trying to remain flexible. Uh, we have small projects and very large projects. We think we can get all the Sound Transit stuff done and this one done um, because this one won't go to construction until probably after those sound transits projects would be. And the design effort doesn't involve as much staff time as the construction effort typically does. 
What could happen is some of our utility projects might have to juggle a little bit and it would help immensely if I can fill all my engineering slots as well. So. All right, thank you. Good luck with that last part. Uh, Councilmember Zorns. Okay, so <clears throat> I, I get the impression from staff that you're very enthusiastic about getting this going. This is our window to do it. So my question to you is, because I'm trying to fully understand how we're funding this, looking at what was in our agenda, we were talking initially about transferring $660,000 from the transportation impact fees. And is my impression correct that because it won't start in until November, it won't be that amount of money or? It will eventually be that amount of money. Okay. By the time we come back with a vote that officially allows you to use that funding for this project, we likely will have only spent something under $30,000 of our own money. Gotcha. At that point, if the council approves it, then it's going to take us a few years to design this. So that $660,000, our match will be spread over the, that few okay. years. Okay. And then just another quick question for, for our clarification is that I noticed in our agenda packet um, that if council did not choose to move forward with this, that staff would come up with other ways to fund this. And for, for our information, could you give us what that might be and what that impact would be? So finance director Chris Bothwell and myself talked a little bit this afternoon, and I think he's probably a better source of information for that, if you would. Okay, so there's a number of funding sources that could fund the design of this project. Uh, one is real estate excise tax. Another is one-time revenues that are in the general fund. Um, so what we would do, so if this wasn't a, a project that wanted, that the council wanted to put on the project list, we would just look for an alternate uh, funding source. There's a number of them out there. Um, so the, one of the projects that we're going to uh, be working with the council on in the next coming, in the coming months is to work on financial policies as well. Uh, so as we start that work, it's going to help uh, guide what funding package we would bring forward to you, but there's a lot of options. Okay. So now this is another question. As we come up with a policy, and since this is spread out over time, could we shift what we would tap into if we decide not to, you know, in 2020 not tap into the impact fees? We could tap into um, another source of funding? Yeah, there's nothing that would stop you from saying we want to fund the design 50% with real estate excise tax and 50% with uh, traffic or transportation impact fees. Um, and you could split it three ways with general fund. I mean, there's a number of options. That would be uh, entirely up to the council. Okay, so one more quick question. The REIT funds is what we pay for the mortgage on City Hall, right? That's a pretty heavy load that REIT covers for us. That's correct. Okay. All right. I, 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 I just wanted clarification. I wasn't questioning the decision because it looks like a lot of good thought went into this. So thank you. Councilmember McNeil. Yeah, most of my stuff was answered, but um, you'd mentioned the, the project. What was the total of the project complete construction? Estimate 57 million. 57 million, roughly? In right away construction. Okay, and typically out of that 57 million, do we typically get a lot of grants for that? We can. We have to play it smart and we have to be a little patient because it would take time. There, for, for a one-shot deal, like typically you go after phases. So right away it would be $17 million, just an estimate. Construction would be 37. So let's talk about the construction part. It's kind of difficult in one year to aggregate that much in, in today's world. There are no small transportation packages going out that fund, you know, medium size to smaller projects. This is kind of a small project compared to the region. It's a, it's a really big project for us. So we would likely phase it so that we can take the most advantage of multiple grant sources and build up as much, much money as we can so we use less of our resources. We would probably also look at getting the most bang for our buck early on. So the phasing is very important. I wouldn't phase and start in the middle because that's likely not the part that's holding up the traffic. It's probably the, the single lane in each direction at 191st intersection. So that might be the first phase and that might solve a lot of problems over the short term and it starts getting worse again. But then you continue with your other phases and hopefully you can kind of catch up like that. So 
I think it is very strategic in order to minimize our use of our local funds, um, but that's the strategy that um, staff typically kind of goes through. Okay, and then um, is there federal dollars that will come in for that? There are federal dollars in the design now, okay. and that's all we have right now. State funding typically is a little difficult to get for three-phase large projects up early. Uh, in the later phases, you're more likely to get those, and that we will also go after as well. Okay, and w does it help that uh, Canyon Park is on a regional growth, is a regional it, growth area? It does help because this is the connection between the regional growth center and downtown, which is recognized as a local center. It's not a regional center, but it certainly is a local center. It also helps that this project is gonna hit all modes of transportation, not just vehicular. So that's a yeah. huge thing. And that seems like it's a connection between community transit, sound transit, and metro? Yeah, community. I think Sound Transit is very interested in community transit coming down and connecting up with them. Then they have regional BRT systems intertwining with each other, not just their own. Um, community transit all by themselves are very interested in serving downtown and the campus, okay. even though it crosses their boundary. Fabulous. Thank you. I just have one quick follow-up question: the transportation impact fees account. We do have the we do have the money in there now. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Is there a motion? Second. Moved by Councilor Zolak, a few of you. So you got moved by Councilor McNeil, second by Councilor Olson to authorize the city manager to begin the design of the Bothell Way Northeast widening right away to 240th Street Southeast in the current biennium and allocating 660000 of transportation impact fees as city matching funds. Is there any discussion on the motion? Just want to say I'm looking forward to it. I think that'll be a huge improvement for our north south uh, transportation. Any other discussion? Seeing none, place your vote. Passes unanimously with Deputy Mayor, Councilmember McAuliffe, and Councilmember Agnew absent and excused. I lost my cheat sheet. And we are now into a public hearing. Um, so officially opening a public hearing, AB 19-079, uh, public hearing to consider adoption of a resolution approving the 2020, sorry, 2025, 2025 six-year transportation improvement program. <coughs> What's that? There's no sound. Okay. You have the floor. All right. Good evening, council members. This is Sherman Gong, city transportation planner here. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about the six-year transportation improvement program here, the 2020, 2025, six years. I um, just want to go over briefly the uh, TIP process and uh, any changes that we have uh, to the TIP since the capital facilities plan, which is closely related and was adopted last year, was approved. <clears throat> so very quickly, uh, the, the, the TIP has to be uh, adopted every year. It's an annual thing required by law, and we, um, we want to, and it's it's a very so it's a source document for many grant agencies to that sometimes require uh, projects be on a six-year tip before they uh, will I'll grant you uh, funds for that <clears throat> so every two years from this diagram every two years we go through the CFP process and budgeting process and and we uh, estimate what the TIP would be that year and and uh, that's what we carry forward um, Every other year when we're not in that CFP process, that's when we are actually catching up to what was approved by the CFP in the previous year. And this is one of those years, the odd years are when we are doing that. Um, this year's uh, CFP is, uh, I mean this year's TIP, we only removed uh, one project from the list <clears throat> that, was the, that was completed. It was the uh, Main Street Enhancement Project. But that wasn't the only thing that we finished. We also, but we're also adding three projects uh, on there as well. Uh, the three projects included the Canyon Park sub area plan update, uh, which was added. It was initially a community development project, but we we took the transportation element funds and added that to the to the tip. And we also added two other projects to the emergency and spot improvements program and the concurrency monitoring and modeling program. Those were two projects that should have been included actually on last the last tip but was ex were excluded for some reason. Um, and 
basically the <clears throat> uh, just because we removed the one Main Street project from this doesn't mean that's the only thing that we accomplished. We also finished <clears throat> uh, several pavement preservation projects, including the 2018 crack ceiling and uh, road roadway patching projects, the Beardsley Boulevard reconstruction project, and uh, 228 pavement preservation project between 19th and 35th. <clears throat> we also included, uh, we also finished um, the 234th Place Southwest Sidewalk Project, which leads from Meridian Avenue to Shelton View Elementary, that direction, as well as the uh, small si sidewalk improvement project on 4th Avenue by Frank Love Elementary School. Um, our next steps are to <coughs> uh, submit this uh, six-year tip to the state and then uh, begin the next CFP process and six-year tip process early next year. So at this time, we're just asking council to adopt the resolution to pass this, adopt this six-year tip. All right, thank you. Uh, nobody signed up on the sign-up sheet. Does anybody have any public comment for the hearing? Seeing none. Um, do council have questions? It's always kind of confusing, the TIP versus the CFP, but... Oh, so Council Resorts, go ahead, sorry. I just have a comment. Okay. Um, I sat down this weekend and drew little Venn diagrams and arrows to help understand that. And what really helped clarify things for me was the uh, attention to detail and making this very readable for the layperson to understand how, how this comes together. So officially, thank you. Thank you very much. I, writing something well is not an easy task, at least not for me. And whoever did this, thank you. Thank you. It was a group effort. Okay. I was going to say some, uh, something along those lines, because this is always in the years past been like, what is this thing and what, what is it and what it's not uh, compared to the CFP? So yeah, it was really well explained, especially, the, you know, yeah. council that haven't been here for eight years are getting it. We did, I didn't get it the first two years I was doing it. So, um, okay. Uh, is there anybody else that has questions? Nope. Okay. Is there a motion? Moved by Councilman, I don't need a second. There we go. Moved by Councilman McNeil, second by Councilman Zorns to adopt the proposed resolution approving in the 2020 2025 six year transportation improvement program. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, go ahead and place your vote. Uh, passes unanimously with uh, Deputy Mayor, Councilmember McAuliffe, and Councilmember Agnew absent and excused. And I think we're ready for a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Moved by Councilmember McNeil, second by Councilmember Olson to adjourn. Any discussion on the motion? See none. Place your vote. <laughs> don't vote no. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't vote no. Uh, passes unanimously with Deputy Mayor, Councilmember McAuliffe, and Councilmember Agnew absent. Excuse me, we're adjourned. <laughs>